We've talked about robust standard errors, and we now look at an example that uses them. The auto data set has some 70, 80 observations of cars that were tested in the uh, cons uh, Consumer Reports magazine in the US in, in the 70s or 80s, actually in seven, 1978. And well, we have seen some variables of that price, whether or not it's foreign, weight length, and some variables. So I'm just running a regression on the price of the car on several X variables here, including foreign. And I'm highlighting two variables because they will turn out to change as a function of whether we specify robust standard errors or not. So two other variables here, most highly significant foreign. So on average, if the car is foreign from a US perspective, that adds $3,400 to the car. And uh, additional weight here adds $4.80. Now, weight is probably measured in kilogram here, so don't be surprised. Uh, one kilogram is 480, but if you add 100 kilograms, it's $480 already, right? So these values are 6% and 7% headroom and length, marginally significant here. Right, so let's look at the constant variance plot. Oh, ha, we see trouble. We see a classical funnel plot. Variance is increasing, variance small here, variance small, a large there. So that means we shouldn't have interpreted the output on the previous page because the violations are violated. Uh, the, the, the assumptions are violated. Okay, so what do we do? We have two options, variance stabilizing transformation, so for example, log, or robust standard errors on the original Y variable. Let's start with robust standard errors because it's easy. We just specify robust. And what happens here? We see um, the two marginal significance levels have um, sort of been decided uh, in favor of headroom is significant and length is not significant. Foreign and weight remain significant the same, right? So, um, that's interpretable here because we have robust standard errors, so the constant variance plot is no longer a problem. Now, in R, you um, specify the same thing like, as shown here. R uses just a slightly different estimate of the variance uh, of the sort of no assumption variance covariance matrix than Stata does. And uh, I have a slide in the next section on what the differences are. The differences are minor. And in this particular example, if you compare the numbers here, 0 0.012, 0 0.167, where was I? 0 0.012, 0 0.16, 7, 8, but rounded it is an 8. So the numbers, the p-values are exactly the same, even though they use slightly different ways of estimating the variance covariance matrix. Okay, so let's see what happens if we use the log price, so the variance stabilizing transformation, and we get surprisingly very, very similar results. And before we had 1%, I think, and now we have 1.5%. And here we had 16%, we have 28%. So very, very similar results. Of course, the coefficients are completely different because, well, they refer to the log price, right? So the coefficients have to be um, different. All right. So again, we should have looked at the constant variance plot really beforehand, but let's look at it of the log price. And what do we see? It's better, right? It's not perfect, but it's better. So let's ignore this observation because we can always ignore one observation. So we have some variability here. We have some variability here. Maybe it's a little more, but I think it is probably better than the original plot. Okay. So here's a question for you. Which of these statements is correct? What changes when you specify robust in your regression? And you can answer that directly. You can also look at the outputs and compare them 
and you get the uh, answer from there. That ends this segment.